Hello and welcome back to Suko by Susanna YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you a tutorial on how to make this, neck this neckline seam cover here. So this is the, the kind of neckline seam cover that you find in ready-to-wear garments, ready-to-wear t-shirts and sweatshirts. And um, it's actually pretty easy to to do this. So the front of the neckline is still um, as sewn. You can totally make um, this strip to cover the entire neckline but you you really don't don't need to do it because it would be too bulky here and around the front. So we usually do this from one shoulder seam to the other shoulder seam and it's just a strip of jersey fabric so this needs to stretch okay to to go over the the head um, and you can do this on all t-shirts and on all sweatshirts uh, that you make so as long as you make a neat garment with a neckband you can totally do this finish here so this is how it looks on the inside of the shirt and on the back of the shirt on the outside you just have this uh, barely no noticeable top stitch here so um, this is sewn with a small zigzag stitch so that it's it's stretchy and it's it's really easy to do the first time you, that you do it 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 can seem kind of tricky because it's really a narrow strip of fabric but as you do it uh, it's you you start seeing that it's really really easy I already have a photograph and a written tutorial for how to do this on my blog. So you can find this with photographs and with text, it's pretty simple on my blog. And almost all of my neat patterns now also include the tutorial on how to do this. But here is the video tutorial and I'm going to show you how to achieve this finish. The first step is to cut a strip of fabric, of jersey fabric. I usually use jersey because the neckline needs to stretch to be able to go over the head. So, cut a strip of jersey fabric um, as it stretches and it should be one inch wide, so two and a half centimeters or one inch wide. It should not be less than that or more than that because if it's more, it will be too bulky. So, one inch is the exact perfect measurement. Now, the length of this strip, you don't need, you don't really need a, a pattern piece for this because you just need to be a bit longer on each side than the neckline so that you can fold it and then sew it. Okay, so this strip here is a bit longer than I need so I'm just going to pin it, start sewing and then I'll cut where, oh, where I don't need it anymore. So now I'm going to turn the neckband towards the right side again, just like when I sewed it before. Turn it around, so this is the back, okay, so the center back. And I'm going to find the shoulder seam, which is this one, and I'm going to start pinning the strip of fabric on the shoulder seam. So just a little bit um, towards the front, then right sides down, so this is the right side, jersey fabric usually curls towards the right side, so right side down, just a bit towards the front of the shoulder seam and then I'm going to fold this back like this and place one pin here. Okay, so one pin is right there. Now I can do this two ways. I can either pin everything until I reach the other shoulder seam. So I can go here and keep going and just pin everything until I reach the other shoulder seam which is here. And then I'll cut the excess, fold it back and place a pin and sew. Or I can just put one pin and then sew it like this. Before I start sewing, there is an important choice here to be made, which is the thread color. So I may have sewn the entire uh, shirt with, with, a, with a specific thread color, but now that I'm going to sew this strip here over the neckline, um, I will need to choose uh, the, the, the upper thread, the upper thread, the one that goes in the needle, it should match this 
this strip here because it's going to be visible here and the bobbin thread should match the shirt the body of the shirt because uh, the bobbin thread the final on the final stitch it will be visible here in the on the back of the neckline so I'm going I have here two bobbin threads to see which one is more similar I think this off-white is better to use here with a shirt the best way to sew this this neckline here is to remove this part of the machine here and just use your free arm so this way I can place the neckline of the shirt around the free arm and sew it here all the way around now that I'm finally going to start sewing which seam allowance should I use? If I just go with one centimeter seam allowance, it won't be good because if I do one centimeter, one centimeter seam allowance, the needle will sew right here in the center of the neckband. So I will have a much narrower neckband. Okay, so how do I do this? I like to do it like this. I align, I want to align the needle with this a thread with this stitch, uh, stitching line that is um, more on the left side. Okay, so this is the, the stitch line where the neckband is really sewn here and it can turn up. So I'm just going to hold the thread back there and then I'm going to lower the needle until I see that the needle pierces that area where that stitch line is. And now I'm going to put down the presser foot and this way I know that the needle will sew exactly on this uh, stitch line that is further to, to the left. But here I can see the stitch line and here I cannot see it because this is opaque, right? Of course. So how will I know when I'm sewing over this strip where, where I need to align this? Okay, so in order to the needle to pierce to stitch right there I see that my fabric is aligned here on my presser foot in this case with this machine it's exactly where the presser foot goes from being opaque to being transparent so I'm just going to sew always aligning the fabric edge here with this area you just look in your machine where the fabric edge lines up and then you just follow that that along okay so now I'm ready to start sewing set your machine stitch to a zigzag stitch with a narrow width and a medium to long length and start sewing make sure to back stitch in the, the beginning and in the end and just sew and take out your pins as you go I'm almost reaching the, the other shoulder seam here. It's right here, the shoulder seam. So I'm going to sew just a bit further and then I'm going to stop and trim the strip, the fabric strip. Cut it a bit farther from the shoulder seam. Now put your needle down, lift the presser foot and turn, fold the, the end of the strip up, then put the presser feet down and keep sewing until you reach the end. Make sure to backstitch at the end to keep everything in place. This first pass is done and the ends are tucked in like like this and now I'm going to see if I sew this correctly and yes it's looking fine and also this way yep 
looking fine. So, moving along. Now comes the most tricky part, to pin the fabric strip. So, start by turning your shirt inside out. So, the wrong side is now facing out. And flip it so that the neck band is closest to you. Just like this. Now, with the neck band now facing out, you just grab the fabric strip and tuck the raw edge under the seam allowance, just like this. And place a pin to keep it in place. I like to start in the middle um, and then I pin the edges, one end, one edge and the other edge. The edges may need to be trimmed down just a tiny bit and then tuck it under the seam allowance and place another pin. So now just keep turning it under, tucking under the seam allowance and pinning. place the last few pins. I still have space here for one more. So just hold it. And everything is pinned now. So now the neckband with this uh, seam cover is ready to be sewn, to be top stitch. And we're going to sew close to the folded edge. If you are going to place tags, I like to place the tags um, when I am sewing because they are um, a bit um, hard to, to pin. So I prefer to start sewing and then place the tags. Set your machine to a narrow zigzag stitch with a medium long length and align your needle to the left of the, of the fabric strip so very close to the edge to the edge on your left and back stitch in the beginning and then take out your pins as you sew and just sew all the way around but stopping before you reach the center back when you're almost at the center back which you can see because of the of the stitch line on the neckband you can stop with the needle down and then place your main tag under the seam cover so just like that under here i like to use some some tweezers to help and keep sewing until you reach the end of the tag when you reach the end of the tag you can stop again with your needle down and then place your size tag if you have it of course place your size tag you can use tweezers to help then just keep sewing until you reach the end of the seam cover and make sure to back stitch at the end
theme cover is now sewn and we have this top stitch here and the bobbin thread on the other side. And the neckline is finished. It looks pretty with this seam all covered, so here it is visible, but here no one will see it. And it stretches, so it still stretches to go over the head. It has this small top stitch here with a, the with a small zigzag, and on the back of the, of the shirt, it has this really small top stitch that is barely visible in this fabric. This is how the top stitch looks on the back of the shirt, so this is why it's important that your bobbin thread matches the color of your shirt fabric. I hope you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to, to the channel and come back again to see more tutorials. Thank you, bye bye!